and welcome to the Vet Scroll Speaks. Today is Tuesday, January 22nd, and this is episode. Literally, have no idea what it is. It's an episode. It's in the notes. There you go. <laughs> I'm Aunt Beth, also known as the Fat Squirrel on Ravelry and Plurk. If you would like to contact me there, you may do so. I'm sorry, I'm going to fidget for just a second. Oh, fidget. So fun to look at yourself so early in the morning. Oh my gosh, we just got back from the bus stop. It is so cold. Now, I know you people in, like, the Yukon are like, mm-hmm, yeah, it's cold there, mm -hmm. It's cold here for us. It's cold. <laughs> I know you're having the exact same reaction I have to people in Florida who are like, oh my gosh, it's other 50 degrees today. I'm like, that's shorts and t-shirt weather, people. <laughs> so I know the perspective and stuff. But it's cold for me. Zush! Really, it's so cold. My daughter had on her her piggy hat, and her cowl, which is, she then proceeded, she also wears spectacles. So she had it, like, to this level, and of course her glasses were getting steamed up, because, hi. So then she decided it was much better to just go ahead and put it over her glasses. So she had approximately this much of her head showing, to which she told me, my head is cold! My forehead is cold! She needs to go to the Yukon, evidently. <laughs> My wrists are cold! There's like an eighth of an inch gap between her glove and her jacket because she didn't have her jacket pulled down all the way. My wrists are cold! My eyeballs are cold! <laughs> I'm cold! I'm like, dude, I feel I totally feel you. I'm sorry. You gotta go to school. <laughs> so, anyway, how are you? I hope you're all doing well. I'm sure you are. If you're not, sorry. I love your face anyway. Um, shenanigans. Well, actually, let's say thank yous first, shall we? Let's do so. Um, I have thank yous, lovely faces donated to the podcast. Do you see my... I totally forgot my iPad thingy. Okay, I'm not going to know the names of any of the pattern designers today. Apologize up front, stamp. I can't show you the fish patterns because I'm a fail. Um, let's see. Oh, thank yous to Robin, Denise, Diane, and Sarah. I think I may have already thanked Diane and Sarah, but I'm not sure. And I couldn't be bothered to watch myself to see if I had thanked them. So in case I haven't. And if I didn't, if I did, well, thank you again anyway. Because I'm thinking of you and saying thank you. They don't know their real life, hard earned in the world, not Monopoly style dollars to the show. Thank you. Um. Okay, I'll do this. Thank you too. Um, the folks at O Loops are doing a knit along in their group, um, which has like multiple tiers, which I won't get into. You can find out more information there. But the reason they sent me this, this is their little stargazer. And it is 100% superwash merino. It's 400 yards, uh, two ply high twist. And this is their, I already said that, their little stargazer colorway. Because they are doing a knit along, uh, again, multiple tiers. But I believe the last tier, I mean, they want you to use this yarn. But the reason I mention it and that they dyed up this specifically is they are helping to support 10% of their net profits will go to a camp called Camp Happy Times, which is a camp for children with cancer. So Camp Happy Times is also accepting hat donations for those children um, in, the, in a space theme of some sort or another. And I will put a link to Camp Happy Times in the show notes and then also, of course, the O-Loops folks. You can find them on Ravelry or you can find their shop on Etsy. Um, so yeah, so I will. I think I might just go ahead and knit this up as a hat for kids. Maybe I get two out of there. Thanks, kids at Oh Loops. Um, what else? I think that's all of the administrati. If you asked for a bag, I gotcha. Um, I'll be invoicing you this week. If you decided you didn't want a bag and you were like, oh, what am I going to this invoice? Don't worry about it. It's okay. Just don't pay it. Email me back like, dude, I don't want that bag no more. I'll be like, okay, cool. If you would like a bag and you have not already contacted me, please don't contact me. 
I lose your name. Oh, also, if you don't get an invoice and you have contacted me, please just tell me. And I'll be like, oh, I'm sorry, dude. Um, because I may have missed you. Um, oh, but if you didn't order one and you'd like to maybe order one and you think about it and you're like, hmm, I will have a few extra and I will put them up on the website. So the fat um, where you can actually buy them. You don't have to email me and like, it's all confusing. Uh, but I'll actually put a thing up there where you can just buy now. And I will do that on Tuesday. So that will be the 29th. I believe it's a Tuesday and I will do that. I don't know. We'll say 7 PM. I don't think they're going to go like crazy. Most people have already ordered theirs, but just in case. Um, so I think that's all. Yes. Okay. Shenanigans. <laughs> it's freezing cold today, but just two days ago, it was 50 degrees. Global warming much. Anyway, two days it was 50 degrees. Saturday it was 50 degrees. Today is actually Tuesday. I know it's not Monday, but I'll tell you why in a minute. Um, we went to the zoo. As my child and I are wont to do anytime it gets warm enough because it's a fabulous place. Because our zoo, our Indianapolis Zoo, is not very big. I'm originally from Cincinnati. The Cincinnati Zoo is quite jimungo. It's, it's a trek. Like, it's got a lot of uphill, down dale. Because Cincinnati is built on the seven hills. And boy, you know it. You're, when you go to the zoo, you're like, I think I just walked up and down all those seven hills. Okay. Anyway, it's quite a bigger zoo and it's more of a workout and whatever. Our zoo is very tiny. I mean, really, itty. It's fabulous because it is so itty. Your kid is not like ready to explode by the time you get done with it all. She's just like, okay, now I'm done. And you're like, oh, me too. Right on. So we went to the zoo it was fabulous as usual there are several folks there out enjoying the warm weather which is very nice we did all the normal things the sea lions were so cute the sea lions have like outside and then if you go inside you can see them swim but outside they have like rocks and stuff and they were so basking you've never seen a sea lion bask it's really amazing they are prodigal baskers they're amazing they, they literally just one of them is just like with, with his head like I mean it's like 180 degree it's crazy it's just as comfortable as can be just soaking up the vitamin D it's awesome very exciting oh, oh and we have a new walrus we had a very okay we had a giant walrus which I'm assuming is the male I didn't check I'm not even sure how to check anyway <laughs> I mean I know but I don't think you know Anyway, so we had a gigantic male walrus and then a gigantic male female walrus. Well, the gigantic male walrus was really, literally, mind-blowingly gigantic. I had no idea how big walruses were. Walry. I like walry. I don't think that's it, but I like it. I had no idea how gigantic they were because when you see them on nature or whatever, there's no dude standing next to them because, hi, they're giant creatures and they can just knock that dude over, evidently. They're huge. Well, our older gentleman walrus passed on. And so our lady walrus has been, I think for two summers now, just tooling around kind of sad. And sometimes they'd let the sea lion go in with her and they chill. But now we have a babyish walrus. It's not a baby baby. It's like a rescued abandoned baby. So I'm sure it's more like a child walrus. It's so cute. They were totally frolicking. Now, I don't know if they were really frolicking or if the baby was just bugging the adult one and she was like, get away from me. But look, they were frolicking. It was very cute. And then what else happened? Oh, so ooh, we have we have all we have crazy construction at our zoo because we are getting. Are you ready? An orangutan center. I don't know how our tiniest zoo in the world, funded by Eli Lilly. Hello. <laughs> Got an orangutan center funded by Eli Lilly. Hello. Um, but it's gonna, it's huge. It's like basically the entire center of the zoo used to be like a lake and there were um, ring-tailed lemurs. I'm sorry. Some of you were just like, dude, fast forward. It's okay. I'll do this when I'm done talking about the zoo. Um, oh, so it was like a lake and it had like ring-tailed lemurs and there were two, there were not two cans flamingos the other things with the crazy beak um and so that was and then like another like a little area where they did sometimes bird demonstrations that is all being completely gutted out and they're putting in the orangutan center it's insane it's huge 
I mean, hello, it should be. Orangutans are awesome. Do you love orangutans? They're one of my favorite animals. Every time I watch them, I get very weepy. I feel like they're like the potential of our race. You know, like we're all like, ah, oh, they haven't evolved. No, I think they did. <laughs> I think they are our potential. They're like all matriarchal and just chilling in the forest. And like everything's cool and one of them is dumb. One of them smacks the other one and they're like, oh, I won't be dumb anymore. But generally, they're just awesome. And every time I watch anything about them, I get all welled up and touched and saddened and joyed and all at the same time stuff, you know? They're awesome. So anyway, that's going to be happening in 2014. Forever from now. Forever. <laughs> but then also the plains were the plains area, which is like P-L-A-I-N-S, by the way, not P-L-A-N-E-S, as my daughter was a little confused for a moment. Actually, it was not my daughter. It was my husband. It was like, there's planes at the zoo? I'm like, husband context. <laughs> Our homonyms are getting us confused. It is homonym, right? When they sound the same. Maybe I messed it up. Anyway, sixth grade English, where are you? Um. Oh, so the planes were open, so we got to see all the planes animals, which usually don't get to see in the winter. I don't know where they put them, but I don't want to ask because it'll make me sad. Block that out. Um, oh, so there was like the rhinoceros and the lions and all that stuff and the baboons. The baboons felt like it was spring that day. You know what I mean? You know what I mean, right? Risky. Awkward. <laughs> we not awkward because it's a zoo and that's what happens and they're animals and they don't care. And we shouldn't care either, but we do because hollow. <laughs> Protestant founding of our nation and whatnots. But anyway, so they were all just like chilling. The giant pink parts. Looking very pink. Not really giant, but just. And they were shenaniganing of their own. <laughs> Which, by the way, is the best just to watch the other people realize what's happening. If you ever, if you go to the zoo, it's usually, the monkeys are really good. The monkeys are always shenaniganing. But just watch the other people and their reactions it's the best part of the zoo <laughs> i mean your own kid is funny because they're like what <gasps> but which is awesome but then to watch that in other people it's even better especially if you get to explain hear them explain to their children what's happening joyous wrestling <laughs> grooming all kinds of crazy explanations i love it so anyway that was the chat again there was another shenanigan, which I'll tell you about right now. That other shenanigan was not nearly as fun and is the reason I am recording late. So I apologize. The show is going to get up late. It's usually posted overnight on Monday night. And it'll come up Tuesday afternoon. You already know this. I'm just explaining. <laughs> but the... Oh, I'm done with the zoo. But there's other nonsensical stuff that you may not care about. Um. Oh, so the other shenanigan was that yesterday morning, okay, by the way, yesterday was MLK Day, so my kid was home, so it's kind of hard to record when my kid is home anyway, because my house has three doors. Yeah, three doors. <laughs> it has closet doors. I'm not counting those. But, like, we have two bedrooms and a bathroom and half of another bathroom. Okay, so I guess technically we have four doors, but the half of another bathroom isn't even a real door. It's the old school accordion door, like from the 70s. Awesome. So anyway, so it's hard to record when there are people in the house because they're just right there and I'm here talking to you. It's, it's weird for me. It's weird. So that was like one of the reasons I didn't record yesterday, but the other reason was the real true reason was that about two years ago or three years ago, I don't know, time starts to fade when you're old like me. Um, my mother bought a serger machine, like an overlock sewing machine at a yard sale for $5. And then she proceeded to let me borrow it. I've now borrowed it for like two years. <laughs> Basically, I think she just didn't have room for it and was like, here, I don't want to give this away because I don't want to lose rights to it, but you store it for a while. <laughs> well, anyway, when I first got it, I like took it out and threaded it and did the whole thing and it seemed to work, right? But I didn't have any use for it at the time. Well, the other day I was like, I had this brilliant idea for something I wanted to make. And I was like, oh my gosh, I really need the serger. The serger would make this so much more of an awesome experience. So I got out the serger. 
And I had to rethread it because it had been like, I don't know, feasted upon by wild mooses or something. Again with the plurals. I'm so confused. <laughs> Why did I pick normal name? Wild dogs, plural S. Um, okay, so it, so I had to rethread it. So I rethreaded it and it worked for like half a second and then suddenly it stopped working. It started jamming, doing crazy stuff. So I rethreaded it again. By the way, if you've never threaded a serger's machine, it's very exciting. There are five threads. You would have to use tweezers. It's awesome. So I rethreaded it thinking maybe I just messed something up. And still it's not working. And I don't know it. Like, I kind of know how a machi sewing machine works. So I can understand if something is wrong. Like, what's probably the cause of it. With the serger, I have no idea. None. I've never used one before. I've never taken a class. By the way, it's a craftsy class. I'm just waiting for coupon code. But I don't know what's wrong with it. But so I spent two hours cursing at the serger machine trying to make it work. And it kind of messed up my vibe for the rest of the day. <laughs> I mean, not for the whole rest of the day, but for a good another four hours. I was really twitchy. That's like tweaky and twitchy. It's really bad. So I just was not feeling it. That's why I delayed it to get my j mojo back. What nuts. So the serger is still staring at me. It's right over there. I gotta try to work on it again today. Maybe I'll wait till tomorrow. <laughs> um. <laughs> so if you know of anybody who repairs serger machines in the Indianapolis area, please let me know. I think I found one though. <laughs> I don't know if it's user error or machine error. Probably a fa fabulous combination of both. But anyway, now on to the knitting! 16 minutes in! <laughs> I have finished objects! Okay. Is that really all I brought? Oh, I'm wearing one! Ha! Fail! This is my slippery hat! It's by the lovely Sarah Dupuis, I think is how she says her fabulous name, I'm guessing. It's clear I'm saying it wrong. And it is made with the Marigold Gins Worsted Weight 100% Superwash in, I believe, bronzite colorway. It'll be in the show notes. Okay. Okay. But it's fabulous. This colorway is amazing. And it worked beautifully with the hat. The hat was fun. I did make mine a little bit bigger because I have a gigantic head. But it was easy to do so. So I am very much enjoying it. Oh, it's Sachi, by the way. Can you see that? It's Sachi. Um, finished object number two. Yes. Um, you've not seen this before. Well, you've seen part of it, but not all of it. This is the goth cowl by the beautiful Sadie of the Yarn of War podcast. Are you watching? She's beautiful. And she should be the one who made the goth cowl. This is made with, uh, it's written for, now that's warm, right? This is written for bulky weight yarn, and it uses one skein of bulky, but this is hand spun that I made. And gosh, it still smells so good. It's like I have my own balaclava homemade right now. Um, you can't see the stitch definition, which is lovely, by the way, uh, as much because the yarn is so dark. It seemed appropriate for the goth cow, though. Okay? Okay. Anyway, it's hand spun, yarns by Stefania, and it is the... I think it's the indigo and iron colorway. <laughs> and it was bulky. Um, I, I knit mine on size eights because it was the handiest thing to me. And I'm such, uh, I think she said, yes, Sadie recommends ten and a halfs, but this was a good gauge for me. And I did want it to be kind of snugger. It's for a friend for her birthday and she's pregnant and needs to be kept warm. <laughs> That's my theory anyway. <laughs> Oh, so it still smells so good, though. Anyway, so yay, that! Well, you can probably see it better way. And it is a pay-for pattern, but it's very inexpensive. I think it's $2.06, I think, U.S. or something like that. It's very expensive. Charted and written. Tiny skinny face. Oh! I was like, what am I supposed to mention? She's also doing her snuggles in along, which I will participate in, not as a podcaster, but as a human. Um, so 
just be aware of that. I know you're hearing about it, but I, I want you to know that I will play. I'm just, I'm not playing yet, but I have, I'm ready any moment. So there's that finished object. That's, oh, spinning finished object. I talked about this last week. Look at this crazy hot mess of ball of nutsness. Um, this is Dorset of we think down origins. <laughs> I thought I think Dorset down is what I'm going with. And it is eight ounces. I just dropped the little extras. Blink. Two ply. Nothing exciting. It is bulky. I think there's like 300 yards out of eight ounces. So it's bulky. Which is totally what I wanted. Um, and also what it wanted to be. I mean, I could have spun it finer. Spun it finer but I just didn't want to. It's eight ounces. I want to get through it. And again, now I can make another crazy cowl. So it's nothing spectacular in terms of my spinning abilities, but it is, it does feel really springy. I like it. It's not the most beautiful spinning job because it was very rustic. Okay. Okay. But it is very, it's so squishy. So that's a really fun of it. So it would make a fun cowl or hats or house socks of insanity. It feels real good. <clears throat> so yay, that. Um, while we're talking about spinning, I have work in progress. I am working on my Gale's art. Here's some of it. So Gale's art, and this is her Coriadale mix. And she just says these as random colorways. So this is, I spun about, I spun just a little bit over an ounce. So this is what I wrote. It's pretty and green and lovely and a little orange. Sneak, sneak. And I brought my flyer over because after I was lamenting a bit the other day about how I couldn't get anything very fine, um, people had said this before, and I, that if you lace your singles across your bobbin, let me pull that a little bit so it gets more obvious what's happening. <clears throat> If you lace your singles across your bobbin, you can do it this way. You can lace it even more than this if you want to. Like you could. Do you watch me not know how to do this now that I'm looking at it? <laughs> you can actually lace it back and forth multiple times. It becomes more cumbersome when you're actually spinning and you have to move your single. Um, so this was enough for me. But I had heard that trick before, but I just had kind of not bothered to remember it because for some reason it just didn't make sense to me because it would work. Now I know how arrogant of me, right? So arrogant. But much like when I was up until the age of 30, thought potato salad just didn't make sense and therefore did not eat it. Hi, potato salad's totally amazing. But it didn't make sense in my head, so I just did not eat it. I'm arrogant, I guess. You know, it didn't make sense, so I hadn't tried it. And also, I wasn't, like, too strung up about getting some finer. But I was, now I have had three or four people say, I'm like, okay. I tried it. It totally works. <laughs> Lacing them back and forth when you have a bobbin-driven wheel totally works. It does. It decreases the amount of pull on your single. And I should specify that's what I mean. It decreases the amount of pull you get on your single, which is one of the problems with trying to spin fine on a bobbin driven wheel, uh, is that they just really, they pull. Um, so doing that, I don't know why. It, it increases the drag between the flyer and the bobbin, I guess. But again, it didn't make sense to me. I need to watch that wheel mechanics video by Judith McKenzie. She is brilliant. Um, but it totally works. So there you go. I mean, it's not super fine. It's not like I'm spinning it lace weight or anything, but it's much finer than, it's finer than I can comfortably get without, without doing the lacing thing. Okay. Okay. <coughs> works in progress. That was a spinning work in progress. Now there are knitting works in progress. Okay. I have, I'm still working on my sock. I'm not showing to you. I've knit like six rows. It's, but I totally have progress on my wall pole by Hannah Fedick. Shut up. It's totally almost there. It's so close. I don't know why I'm having trouble finishing this last little bit. Cause I'm just like, whatever. But it's totally like made into a thing that resembles a sweater that would fit on a human. 
So you're like, waka! It's all, it's, it's closed off for the neck. Now I'm just doing that Hannah Fettigy thing where you make the collar and then you, it goes around like that. I am sticking my sweater. So that's why this looks so weird. <laughs> um, I thought about like by, like just making it into two pieces and going around, but then I was afraid that it would change too much how the collar lay, you know what I mean? I was afraid there would be distinction between the part that was steeked and that wasn't. And I think there would be, because there would be a firm edge versus a steeked edge, which is much more flexible. You know what I mean? I don't know, it's in my head, it makes sense. That's what I'm going with. I also thought about doing it as an applied edging, like, you know, consuming the live stitches. Joanna Spring. Um, <clears throat> as I went around and applying it that way, like not binding this off, but just leaving it live and then doing like an applied, making this the applied edging around. Um, I decided ultimately not to do that because A, the pattern didn't say that. And I thought, well, if it is the best thing, then the pattern probably would have said it because it's Hannah Fettig and it's not like some Joe Schmo. But also because I thought, well, maybe the binding off for the neck gives it a little bit more stability for the, so it doesn't slide off as much, which is always kind of a concern on those open front cardigan things. So that's what I, that's what I did. We'll see what happens. I may rule the day, but I don't think so. <laughs> part of me was like, oh, I want it more flexible so that it's not like, but the part of me, I went back and forth. So I had to just go with the pattern set. That's what I'm doing. So yeah, it's actually like a thing. It's made of beaver side <clears throat> dry goods, two ply sock, which is an 80% merino, 20% mohair mix. Very durable. Out of the Swift Fox colorway, and I am on US 2s. I knit a lot of the body on US 3s, uh, but as I said, I started on 2s and then I just gave up because I was like, I'm never getting anywhere! The 3s, the gauge wasn't really very different at all, just minimally different, but it made me feel better. <laughs> but then when I joined the sleeves, I went back to the 2. And I knit the sleeves on 2s, which I'm not sure why I did that. I think it's because I didn't have 13 inch, or size 3 circular, 16 inch circulars. <laughs> How do I not have those? Really? I like seven pairs of size three needles. Why don't I have any 16 inch ones? <clears throat> so yeah, totally dig it. it. Smells so good. I love the way the beaver slide dry goods smells. It smells beautiful. And when you're knitting with it, you don't have to do this to smell it. Just when you're knitting with it, it's all in your lap and you're watching Stargate with your husband and your partner and you're just knitting and it smells so good. Love it. And this is my last, I think I have five balls. Because I'm gigantic. Okay. And I can't really tell on the screen, but I am. <clears throat> so this is my last one. Um, and I still have to steak it and then perhaps do an applied eye cord edging. I don't know how, what I'm going to do about that. We're just going to see how, how the cards lay. Um, my second work in progress that I'm showing you is the Sunday morning slippers. And this is where I'm going to fail without the iPad -y thing. I don't know. I, beautiful face. Designer donated them. Love her face. Um, ah, it's so cold, right? Dude. Right. And we try to keep our heat. We're not like join a spring, like our service has set on 52. But we do keep our house pretty cold. And because our house is an old house and has lots of crazy single pane windows, which we have storm windows on, but still, like we use quilts as curtains in the winter. <laughs> We're fancy like that. <laughs> it totally works, by the way. We have a curtain rod that has the, it has those circle things, but it has a clip on the end. Genius. And so you can just take it down. Like we usually put it up sometime after Thanksgiving and we take it down. I don't know when it stops being so stinking cold and it's perfect. You just clip it right up there and it's like a queen size curtain and it almost fits our giant perfect, win our giant window. It's awesome. Thanks my mom who made me that quilt. Um, tangential tirade. Um, anyway, back to the slippers. <laughs> so I have slippers. My mother bought me LL Bean shearling slippers, which I do love quite a bit. But they're kind of st stinky. Like they get a little rank. <laughs> the other day I was like, oh my lord. I mean, nobody likes to admit that their feet stink. And I don't think my feet stink abnormally more than any other human's feet stinks. But 
They are feet. And I wear those slippers a lot in the winter. And they're funky. <laughs> so they may have to be retired. Does anybody know how to deodorize shearling? Anyway. So I decided, and I have another pair of slippers. I have the, um, the duffers. But um, I think they're a little too short. Because the duffers kind of natural, the way the pattern is made, they kind of curl like this a little bit in the front. And I made mine with a double sole because I was afraid that the single sole would not be durable enough. Because I've made single sole slippers before and they wore through like instantly. So I made mine with a double sole and I think combining the double sole and that like curvy toe thing, they just a little bit, they make my toes kind of do this. That's just not the best. It's not the slipper pattern's fault. I think it was my fault for making them too small. You know what I mean? So I decided to make myself another pair. Long story, so long. And so I'm making the Sunday morning slippers. <laughs> and I'm making these with some crazy rug yarn that I bought at the Southern Indiana Fiber Festival from an unknown vendor. It's Blue Acorn. And oh, I should have brought that skein in because I have another skein, skein that's like this really grassy, appley green. I guess it's grass green. So they only sell them in, they sell them in 250 yard skeins. So whether you get like a fingering weight or the bulky weight, it's always 250 yards and that's just a different price. It's only $7.50 for 250 bulky yards. And it's rug wool. I mean, it's rug wool. But I'm thinking it'll be perfect for slippers. Let's hope it felt. I'm sure it will. But the woman said it's Lincoln Long Wool. I'm assuming she's right. So there's slipper number one. Gigantic. And then here's the little bitty bit, bit of slipper number two. But you can see this is the ball. And I've already, and I'm working from the inside and the outside. And I've already made one slipper out of it. This ball was it was this way as big as my head. Bigger. It was awesome. I was so excited. Nobody else in the family seemed to care nearly as much as I did. <laughs> oh, but ain't that the truth of a knitter. Okay. So that's that. So hopefully those will be done soon and I can put them on my toes. And I think that's all for the week. Oh, that's not all for the week. We have a thousand members. Thank you all for signing up. You're fabulous. Oh my gosh, thank you also. I checked iTunes reviews and there are several more. Thank you. But thank you for joining the group. Yay, we have one of thousand members so we give away prizes. So you can win one of five of this pattern. Not this hat, but this pattern. Or you could win a three month membership, three month membership to the Project Pouch of the Month Club. Donated by Aaron of Bling Your String. How fancy is that? Fancy. So yay. I will draw for those prizes next week. So I will close the thread a week from yesterday in the morning. So I will close this thread, let's say at 8 a.m. on Monday, January 29th. No. 7th, 28th. But it's a Monday. That overrides the day that I just gave you that might be wrong. Monday at 8 a.m. I'm locking it out. So get in your membership prize stuff. Um, I asked you just to um, put one uh, at least one of your other podcasts that you enjoy, knitting or non-related, in the comments. So that way we can have like a giant pool of podcasts to which to draw from. So there have been lots of good ones. Um, so yeah. You don't have to put your favorite. Don't. I'm not like asking you to like call out anybody like as your favorite or not favorite. I am just asking you to put one or more of any of the ones you like. So yay! I've enjoyed reading those. They're fabulous. Some of them said that I was their favorite. Thanks. Crazy faces. Um. So that's all. I hope you have a super fabulous week, and I will see you next time.